Greetings, my dear fiends. I am Bobby Gum Monster of Monster Movie Night, and this is my co-host, Boris T. Buzzard. And we're here to guide you through the darkness, through the macabre, through the shores of places you have never gone before. <laughs> right, Boris? Yeah. And I can... You know, I can feel the rustle of the leaves outside. I feel the, uh, the, the smell of pumpkins growing in the wood, in the far off uh, fields, <laughs> ready to become jack-o'-lanterns in just a wee short bit of time. <laughs> and we, of course, are starting to get ready here at uh, Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum as well. Little things, little things, but you know, tonight is about the children. <laughs> of course, Halloween is about the children as well, right, Boris? Candy, ghosts, uh, you know, uh, doing things that might make you go boop in the night. <laughs> but uh, children, getting back to the children, they're our future, you know, especially in the uh, future of, well, monsters and horror. Uh, they're the ones that we'll pass the torch down to. <laughs> and tonight is about children on the film that we have selected, starring Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing, our dynamic duo of horror. It's called Nothing But the Night. <laughs> so, my dear fiends, let's get right to it. <laughs> Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing, Nothing But the Night. <laughs> Excellent. Now let's turn it into tune into the old internet haunted TV. <laughs>
easy little bastard kids. Catch fire. She's still under sedation, Doctor. Oh, fire! Burning me! Burning Must be a mind's way of releasing the trauma of the crack. The wind blowing the flames red. The door is red. Oh! 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 oh. Intriguing. Let me know as soon as you wake. Yes, Doctor. Sorry, Sir Mark. That's all right. I want to work with you about Mary Valley, the coach crash. We were just discussing that very subject. This is Colonel Bingham, Peter Haynes. Hello. How do you do? Child progressing well? Physically, yes. Then what's your problem? I want to keep her in. But you can't, unless you have a very good reason. Well, there's something very wrong, something more than minor abrasions and shock. She needs psychotherapy. If our orphanage insists on her going back there, then we must let her. Officially, she's in their care. Well, they must be concerned about the coach crash. I think she can help us find out how it happened. You want me to back your request? Well, they'll listen to you. And I can't commit myself without knowing all the facts. Then come and see her. Please. Very well. Later. Thank you, sir. You haven't told me yet why you're so interested in the accidental death of a coach driver. I may be semi-returned, but I have my reasons. You still miss your work? This isn't just a police matter, Mark. This is personal. I don't see how. Mark, you've heard of the Van Traylon Fellowship. Mm. A highly charitable organization. The coach was returning to the airport from an outing in London arranged for the children of the Van Traylon Orphanage. It's a very fortunate escape. Not for the driver. They might all have been killed. That was precisely the intention. A coachload of children? Oh, I can't believe that. The children were incidental. What? They were accompanied by three illustrious and very rich trustees of the Van Traylon Trust. Who would want to kill them? During the past nine months, three trustees have died. Something here I'd like you to have a look at. Noreen Stokes, extremely successful novelist, drove her car over a cliff on a road that she knew like the back of her hand. Paul Anderson, textile tycoon, we worked together during the war in military intelligence, fell off a top floor balcony. Suicide? He was recuperating from a prostate gland operation, hardly the end of the world. Helen Van Traylon blew out her brains, apparently. But you don't think she did? Suicide needs a motive, Mark. Helen Van Traylon created the trust and the orphanage. She was devoted to the children there. She was also immensely rich. All her money and the full estate of the other two is willed to the Van Traylon Trust. If those three trustees had died in that coach last night, the trust would have been five million pounds richer. And you think someone couldn't wait for natural causes? I can prove it with your help. It's police territory. I can get temporary reinstatement with full authority. You won't find it easy persuading the Home Office to do that. No, oh, they'll listen to me and evidence from you, and they know my association with Paul Anderson. I want this case. Why? Paul Anderson was a very great friend of mine. Those deaths are connected, Mark. I'm sure of it. You've got my kid here. Where is she? Could I have the name, please? Harv. Anna Harv. And the kid's name's Mary. Harv. Mary Howe. It's 
Sorry, madam. No one of that name here. Well, I tell you, she's here. You sure you've come to the right place, madam? Look, if you think I'm leaving here without seeing my kid, mate, you're mistaken. Here, just a minute. Stop her. Come along. Let go of me. Come along. I want my girl. You have no right to kiss. Let me go, you piece. How dare you? Find out what you can. Please. the name of Mrs. Harb. Claim we got her... Did you say Harb? That's right, sir. Rather abusive. Well, she's the girl's mother. Her. How do you know? That? Mary told me the trustees had a name changed from Harb. It's about a missing kid. Putting you through. News desk. I want to report a stolen child. Of course I bloody can. She's my kid and I want her back. Can I have your name and address, please? It was your newspaper that first revealed it to me, you see. Sugar. No, thanks. I recognized her straight away from the photograph. Poor little Mary. You've got to help me to get her back. <laughs> I can't promise we'll print the story. You will. Mrs. Harb. Plenty of cases like yours. But Mary's different. She's my daughter. I've got to help her. Help her? <laughs> She's got to be better off where she is than here. Think you know it all, don't you? Look, I'm a mother. They've got no right to steal her from me. She's mine. Sorry, Mrs. Harb. It's not enough. Like my editor said, what's so special about Anna Harb? You tight little hustler. <laughs> I don't like being conned. What do you mean? I know about you. Ten years, Broadmoor, triple killing. That's why they took your Mary away. Yes, I'll hold on. When I said I'd back you, I hardly expected you to go this far. I had to have time. You had no authority to hold Mary Valley back against the wishes of those responsible for her. Well, how else can I help her? Hello? Oh, Lord Fawnley. Oh, good afternoon. My name is Ashley. That is correct. Uh, Sir Mark, I was speaking with a Dr. Haynes earlier today. A rather overzealous young man. Oh, yes. He's a psychiatrist on Mary's case. The medical reports we received spoke only of slight abrasions and shock. Dr. Haynes apparently requires Mary to undergo fresh tests and observation. Is all that really necessary? I'm sure Dr. Haynes is only acting in the best interests of his patient, Lord Fawnley. We quite appreciate his concern, but the medical facilities at our orphanage are of the highest order, I assure you. The degree of shock is, of course, an unknown quantity. We're fully equipped to deal with that sort of thing. So on the assumption that Mary will be perfectly well able to travel... Lord Fawnley, that recommendation hasn't been Yet. Nevertheless, it will be made, Sir Mark. So we will arrange for Mary to be brought back to the orphanage as quickly as possible. But there are certain formalities. They will be dealt with. Goodbye, Sir Mark. I dislike being put in my place for you or anyone else. Thank you, sir, for holding them off. Don't push your luck, Peter. My job is to run a path lab, not stick my neck out on your account. But it isn't just for me. That child needs help. Trustees simply don't understand. Can you blame them? She's apparently fit and well. Physically, yes. I'm glad to admit it. And just remember, she's not here as a subject for experiment or to satisfy your ego. Now, look, I don't care about myself. That's painfully obvious. 
It's the only two happy to put your reputation on the block, and mine as well. Once you're committed, you've got to stick your neck out. You don't need to remind me of your past record in that respect. I'm just telling you, I backed you far enough. But I've only just started to get somewhere. Peter, there are some journeys we have to make alone. You said you'd come and observe the hypnosis session. And what would that achieve? Once you've witnessed that, I'm sure you'll see it as I do. You'll be committed too. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you. The Dean is lecturing in the States, apparently. And the Chairman of the Board of Governors is with the Minister. Your parish, I think. Leave it to me. The minister always had a soft spot for the Van Traylon Trust. Or to make this chap Haynes more amenable, eh? <laughs> Post-mortem on the coach driver. Anything in particular? Burns on the face, left-hand side. Quite inexplicable. Caused by the crash, I suppose. The coach didn't catch fire. And these burns are localized anyway. Well, pity the driver didn't live long enough to talk. There is a possible eyewitness, Mary Valley. Haynes seems to think she can tell us something. I don't see her as being exactly reliable in her present state, do you? I'm not in any mood to judge. You can do what you can. Oh, for heaven's sake, Charles, I get pressure from you and from Haynes and from the trustees. Mark, if she does know something, very well. I will go to his hypnosis session with the girl and ring you if there's anything of interest. Thanks. And after that, I wash my hands of the whole affair. Dr. Yates, I have met Anna Harp. She's cheap, she's common, she has a record of violence, but she is Mary's mother. My dear young lady, we don't deny that. But you're using your legal rights as trustees of Mary to deny a basic flesh and blood relationship. Our concern is for the child. And from what you've told us, it's quite clear to me that Mary is far better off in our care. Mary's such a sweet child. Have you met her yet, Miss Foster? No, Lord Paulney, not yet. You'll forgive my asking, I know, Miss Foster, but did Mrs. Harb contact you in the first place, or was it the other way around? Dr. Yates, we don't invent the news. We only report it. Impartially, of course without making any attempt to stir things up? Is there anything to stir up, Lord Faulkner? No, there is not. Not even the brutal denial of a mother's rights? Miss Foster, this woman is a common prostitute and murderer. You admit as much yourself. She paid for what she did with 10 years of her life. Now she is entitled to a second chance. Why do you think her child was taken into official care and protection before coming to us? To twist a cliche, Miss Foster, would you let Anna Harb be a mother to your daughter? Oh. Will you allow her to prove her case in a court of law? I think you'll find all the legal aspects have been properly dealt with, Miss Foster. We're checking into that, Lord Faulkner. I presume that means your paper is prepared to pay legal costs in return for Mrs. Harb's exclusive, heart-rending story? Of course. Somebody has to. Even if it means inventing rights no one even dreamt of before you came along? I didn't invent motherhood, Dr. Yates. Look, will you allow her to see the child? No, we can't allow that, I'm afraid. Mary must not be disturbed. I want you to tell me about the fire. No, I don't want to talk about it, please. I'm trying to help you, Mary. No, I don't want the fire. Where did it start? In the wooden hut. The wind and the change and the flame spread so quickly. Go on. Across the knocking pen and the steers stampeded. Oh, I don't want to remember anymore, please. You must, Mary. But I don't want to go back there. Try to remember what happened. 
door. It's locked. I can smell burning. Rubber. The door is red, bright red, and so hot. The room. What can you see in the room? There's a scatter gun on the wall. And a safe. A safe? Is there a name on it? Yes. Read it, Mary. The Linksville Corporation, Detroit. Go on, Mary. What can you feel? It was so cool at first. I was all right. Safe from the flames and the steers and the screaming. But the fire came faster and faster. The door is red, bright red, and my body is burning. Why didn't the men come and help me? Oh, help me, please, help me! It, help me! It's all right, Mary. It's all over now. It's all right. When I snap my fingers, you will wake up and remember nothing. Can I go home soon? You mean to in the house, Mary? Yes, that's right. Have you ever been there? It's a wonderful place. Dr. Haynes, will someone see you? You go. Tell Dr. Ashley all about in the house and your friends there. Won't be long. Do you know where in the house is? No. It's in Scotland, on the island of Bala, hundreds of miles away. I'm sorry, Miss Foster. I'm... Not making any statements to the press. <laughs> Is that what the Van Trillian people told you to say? It's the uh, policy of the hospital. Is it also your policy to refuse a mother's rights to see her child? Mrs. Hahn? Do you know her? No, but I'd like to speak to her. Do you know where she is? Why do you want to know? I need her help. Please tell me where she is. <laughs> I can't do that. But I can arrange a meeting. For the three of us? When? This afternoon. I'll be in touch. Bye. Auntie Helen was very nice to me. But she died. She said Mary Valley was a pretty name than Mary Hogg. Do you think so? I think it is, Anna. Mary, would you like to meet your real mummy? When can I go back to Inver House? You see, I was ill last winter, so we're having a Guy Fawkes night on my birthday, next week. Hello. Hi. I'm, uh, sorry I'm late. No, you're ten minutes early. Exactly where are we going? To Anna Harp's flat. She lives just across the road. What's wrong with being early, then? Look, Dr. Haynes, we play it my way or we don't play it at all. Then try to play it straight, that's all. What else? Now, look, I know it's your job to get a story, but it's my job to make that child well. And that, to me, is the only important thing. Let's have some tea. Uh, there must be someone in the market. Mm. You think the shock treatment would help? Seeing a mother could trigger an emotional release and break a nightmare. Hmm. Do you know anything at all about Anna Hart? Only that she's Mary's mother. Come on up. Ah. Tea, please, love. Oh, no. Sorry, mate. Uh, tea or coffee? Uh, tea, please. Two teas, please. This, uh, this nightmare, is it violent? It relates to something violent, yes. Why? Well, Anna Harp was in Broadmoor for murder. She had Mary while she was working as a prostitute. Well, why do you tell me that now? I thought you ought to know. Thank you very much. Would you like to change your mind about this meeting? No, I wouldn't. Oh. It's all right. Sugar? Okay. Have you got any ideas about heredity or genetics? I thought your angle was the human anguish of mother and child, torn apart. Always open to variations on a theme, Doctor. Mm. A bloodline of depravity. 
Won't wash. Maybe not scientifically, but it makes great reading. Oh, I see. The higher realms of modern journalism. That's how I make my bread. Besides, we both know you're taking a terrible risk with that little girl. The meeting will take place under controlled conditions in the hospital. There will be little or no risk. And it won't happen unless I'm certain that Anna Harb is completely genuine. All I want is an exclusive interview after they've met. With the mother, not the child, and outside the hospital. Why, are you afraid I'm going to make waves? Anna Harb can take care of herself. The child can't. She's my responsibility. And nothing must go wrong. Yes, doctor. Never burned or scolded. Not all the time she was with me. I was a good mother. But she was taken away from you when she was seven years old. Yeah, I was on the game, wasn't I? That and the ten years in Broadmoor. Mind you, that's before Mary ever happened. Well, it still counts. Why should it? I've still got a right to my own child. You're positive she was never involved in any sort of fire. I told you, didn't I? Look, why don't you ask them trustees? They're the ones that have had my Mary these past three years. And they've taken very good care of her. Oh, is that why she's sick in the head? Look, it isn't me that's had her bottled up on that bloody island, but just because they're stinking rich, they think they can get away with anything, and to hell with the likes of me. Well, I'll show them. I'm going to teach them different. The Van Trellen Trust is a responsible organisation, Mrs. Harp. Don't you come back with me. It's their doctors that took Mary, and it's doctors like you that put me inside, so don't you come back with me, mister. Now, Dr. Haynes is trying to help Mary. Then make them give her back to me. I'm sorry, I have no authority to do that. I swear to you, she'll come to no harm. She's in trouble, and I can save her. I know it. How can you tell? See it in your crystal ball? It's in me. And in Mary. Deeper than you'll ever know. That's why she's got to be back with me. I can't promise that. But I can arrange for you to see her at the hospital. Do that, and you'll be forever blessed. My hope is that you can help me break a nightmare. I'd do anything to help her. I'd give my life for her. But if you're lying to me, if this is some kind of trick, I'll kill you. Aren't you afraid I'll dirty up your antiseptic world? I don't remember objecting. Besides, you're involved too. I'm only here for the story. The debt's a bonus. I'll do what I can. My hospital fires. They're confidential, I'm afraid. Sure. I'm being a rotten host. What about a drink? No, thanks. Coffee? Fine. Biscuits? <laughs> no, thanks. All your sexy books. Mostly technical. Mm. Peter? Yeah. Is Mary Valley in danger? The symptoms are always serious, especially in the child. What's your diagnosis? I'm not sure yet. But I must explain her morbid fascination for fire. A nightmare about a blaze where she practically feels she's being burnt alive. As though she were a totally different person. I'm 
sorry the coffee's taking so long. It's all right. Does uh, Haynes know that we intend to visit the child? Not yet. He's usually with her this time of the morning. No, 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 don't touch you. me! No, get off! I don't Stop. leave me alone! No, no! No, no, leave me alone! Leave her alone! No. Anna, are you mad? Leave her alone! No, no, no! I'll bloody no, murder you! No, no, I'll bet no, you wish you'd no, never been no, born! No, no, bloody murder you! No. Nurse will look after you. Put her in the private ward and stay with her, please. Yes, sir, ma'am. And who are you? Joan Foster, Daily Echo. So you're responsible for bringing that lunatic in here? I'm sorry to disappoint you, gentlemen, but the meeting was arranged by Dr. Haynes. Where is he? He wanted Mary to meet her mother. Well, it's not a criminal offence. He's in the ward. The young man needs a lesson in responsibility. Good evening, everybody. I'm the Raven, and you're watching Monster Movie Night. Yes, I know, with Bobby Gay Monster and Boris T. Buzzer. What? <sighs> okay. Word to your monster movie night. Are you happy? Okay. Right, stop, man. Okay. Enjoy the film, everybody. Yeah. You're pleased to be back in the seat of power? It's inevitable. Once the Home Secretary knew of the circumstances of Haynes' death. Oh, yes. Here's the path report you wanted. Oh, thank you. Oh, by the way, Foster's statement to the police confirmed that the hat pin belonged to Anna Hobb. You think she's connected with the other deaths, don't you? According to Foster, that woman hated anybody who came between her and the child. Mm. Even Haynes, who wanted to help. Most of all, the trustees. And all the deaths have occurred since Mary Valley was taken into the van trail and orphanage on the island of Bala. They've taken her back. They should be on their way now. She ought to be as safe there as anywhere.
Deaths, Noreen Stokes, Paul Anderson, Helen Van Traylon. Common factors, all victims suffered mutilating injuries to the head. All deaths could be accidental or self-inflicted. I was right. Yes. But what does it prove? All victims without issue, all effects bequeathed to Van Traylon Trust. Unrelated deaths do not conform. Victims Haynes and driver of coach. For further analysis, autopsy data required... That's all, sir. Thank you. Accidental, self-inflicted, or murder. And for what reason? Suppose the last surviving trustee inherits all the money. The killings are too blatant. Of a logical violence of a vendetta. Involving Anna Harp. Not by herself, surely. No. No, I agree with you. There must be someone else. Are autopsy details available on the three dead trustees? No, not yet. I'll arrange for an exhumation order immediately. Mm -hmm. What about this, then? You must be joking. It's a Rover 2000 we're looking for, stolen from Glasgow. What'll I do with this? It's not been claimed. Has it not? Well, put it ashore and I'll check. Okay. I didn't mean to startle you. No, it's all right, really, Mrs. Ellison. Just for a moment, I thought... I know. Now, I've brought you some hot milk and a plate of biscuits. You can have them in here with me before you go upstairs to bed and get a good night's sleep, eh? Well, thank you very much. What's this you're reading? Woodstock by Walter Scott. That's Cavaliers and Roundheads. Cromwell's time, isn't it? Yes, it's a very interesting period of history. Oh, is it really? You don't find this too grown up for you, hmm? Grown up? Well, yes, a bit. I found it on the table. I was just glancing at it. I expect it's Lord Fornley's. It's rather his cup of tea, isn't it? <laughs> That's all right. Not too hot. Fine, thanks. It reminds me of the hospital. They used to give us hot milk first thing at night.
poor child. You had a dreadful time. You heard everything that happened. Yes. They told us. That's why we insisted you came home at once. Try to be brave. Try to be grown up about it. My mother, she came into the room. She's like a strange animal. I couldn't understand her. I didn't know what she was doing. The doctor, he tried to stop her. There, there, my pet. Don't think about it. Put it out of your mind. I keep seeing her. Keep seeing her coming for she's me. She's not coming for you. Don't be afraid. She might have followed me here. Oh, no, don't worry. She's hundreds of miles from this island. Are you sure? Quite sure. You must forget all about her. You're quite safe. Here with us. Just like you've always been. I do feel safe here. I wish you were my mother, Mrs. Ellison. left her lying on the sofa. Poor child, she's completely worn out. How did she seem otherwise? Remarkably composed, considering what she's been through. Even so, we must be prepared for a delayed reaction. Well, let's take her mind off things. <laughs> it's her birthday tomorrow. We must make it a memorable one. These are your credentials. That's all you'll need. Well, thank you. Now, what happens if the trustees won't cooperate? They will. Yes. Thank you. Well, I'll be in touch as soon as I have something positive. See you later. Mark. Yeah? A van registered in the name of Anna Harve has just been found on the Lochern Bala ferry. Then she's on the island. Exactly. Ah, my dear fiends, <laughs> there's nothing like the children, eh? Uh, there's nothing like the toys that children loves to play with, especially if they're, well, haunted, you know, like most are. So many are. <laughs> are you enjoying tonight's feature? Ah, the children. Mischiefy, mischiefy little fellows and fellowettes, aren't they? <laughs> you never know what they'll do next. <laughs> of course, you know, masks and toys have always went with children hand in hand from the very beginning of time to uh, to eat to up to modern days, you know, uh, there are rituals that uh, children played with dolls to learn how to be better parents, and there were masks that the adults and the children wore for better times to come or to scare away the evil creatures that inhabited the woods or the world outside of their abodes. <laughs> And like, much like tonight's feature, you never know exactly what a child is thinking. <laughs> but I bet I do. <laughs> so, my dear friends, let's get back to tonight's feature. Nothing But the Night, starring Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. <laughs> Oh, 
He must be heading for Inverhaz. He should never get there. The estate's been sealed off and the chief constable's put himself personally in charge. How much have the trustees been told? Only that Anna Harb is on the island. We've got to make sure that she never reaches the orphanage. take us to get there, Inspector. A couple of hours, sir. We've been plenty of time for the press conference. Arranged, I presume, by Chief Constable Cameron. Yes, sir. He's a great one for keeping people informed. Everyone except me, apparently. Let's well, keep the press happy, you see, sir. Stops them blowing up things beyond all proportion. What is it, Angus? Bloody vandals. What have they taken? My explosives. And these. Detonators. That's serious. I looked at last night. You saw me. Aye. We best report it then. Roadblocks have been set up at key points on the island, and an intensive search is being carried out for the woman known as Anna Harb. We have reason to believe that she might be able to help us with our inquiries. Oh, uh, further bulletins will be issued as soon as information becomes available. Now, any questions? Chief Constable Cameron, access to the island has been strictly controlled. Is this really necessary? In the circumstances, yes, it is. We don't want tourists and idle sightseers making the job of the police more difficult, do we? Does this mean that Bala is officially cut off from the outside world? Accredited members of the press will be admitted, of course, but we're asking you to keep strictly to the limits set. The town of Bala itself, that is. Chief Constable, what about Mary Valley? Miss... Uh... Foster. Miss Foster. Well, now, Mary is safe and well, I believe. But is she well protected? Of course she is. Security arrangements are in operation at Inver House. Now, how many men would you say that involved? Oh, well, most of the island's police force. A perfectly adequate number of men. Would you say more than ten? Twelve, I would say. Which leaves exactly seven men and two dog handlers to conduct the intensive search for Anna Harb. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, now, <laughs> you know your figures very well, Miss Foster. I'm surprised you find them adequate. Now, look, we are doing the best we can, woman. This way, sir. Thank you. A deliberate attempt to provoke an emotional situation merely in order that you can feed your grubby little circulation figures. Does that mean that you refuse to admit that Mary Fanny is in danger to from this mad woman? Colonel Bingham. Thank goodness you can. And Sir Mark Ashley, Mr. Cameron. How do you do, sir? Finish it off quickly, will you? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, well, now, ladies and gentlemen, I have nothing further to add at this stage. Now, Chief Constable, will you care to brief us on the presence of Colonel Bingham and Sir Mark Ashley, the eminent pathologist? Are you on holiday, gentlemen? 
Or may I presume a call to duty? Miss Foster, your undeniable flair for bad taste is only succeeding in wasting everybody's valuable time. Colonel Bingham, is it not true the Home Secretary has ordered you to take over this case? Will Mary Valley be taken into hiding, Colonel? Does this mean you'll be authorized to use truth? Can you personally guarantee As her safety? As the Chief Constable was about to say, this press conference is now ended. Everything all right? Aye, everything's all right, sir. Join themselves. It's over there, uh, just round the headland, less than an hour away. Blasted reporters, never let you get on with your work. See, I want you to drive me. I specifically requested a police launch, and yet we have to travel with this brood of tabloid vultures. They have their job to do, I suppose. May I quote that gem of appreciation, Sir Mark? Still pursuing your story to the bitter end, Miss Foster. I try to keep up with the hounds, Colonel. Well, you'll excuse me. No comment, Miss Foster. I don't want you to talk. I want you to listen. I don't know what you have in mind, but whatever it is, I'm afraid I'm not interested. Please. I must explain to someone. I know I'm to blame for Peter Haynes' death. I arranged the meeting with Anna Hart. I have read your statement. Those were the facts. I want to tell you what I found out. I like Peter. A lot. We... Look, if I hadn't arranged that meeting with that crazy woman, none of this would have happened. I want to help. I know I can. Colonel Bingham would never understand what I found out. Mark! Yes? Over here. Isn't she a beauty? She belongs to the Van Traylon trustees. Really? It's their personal method of transport between the mainland and Bala. 
Must be wonderful for the children. Uh, I think you'll find that's typical of these people, generous to a fault. Indeed, there are some locals who try to take advantage of the generosity. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Okay. Well, there were five trustees on the boat, but no children. Thank God for that small mercy. The first thing is to find out how it happened. Was it sabotage? I have a theory about the sabotage, sir. Either a simple timing device or even a firing mechanism activated by the automatic changeover to the reserve fuel tanks. Makes sense. There's also been a reported theft from the local quarry. Dynamite and detonators. Why the hell wasn't I told about it's it? It's only just been reported, sir, just before we arrived. Then it's definitely a sabotage. We need evidence of the explosion first. I have three boats out now, sir, collecting debris. Mark, you need somewhere to work. I will. Excuse me, sir, but I've arranged for itemization facilities at the quayside. Disused custom shed. Thank you. And our local GP, a Dr. Knight, is available if required. He's at the quayside now. I'll certainly need him. It's not a pleasant job. There'll be little enough left of those on board. Got everything you want. As long as I have this, I can manage. Very some laboratory space at the cottage hospital. Sergeant. Thank you again, Inspector. If it was sabotage, it needed specialist knowledge. Not difficult to come by these days. Five dead in one go. Five more dead trustees. <laughs> Bala Police Station, Inspector Grant. Inspector Grant, I, I want to report a missing child. Uh, it's a little boy. No, we, we've searched all the buildings at Grant's. He, he, he's gone. Uh, his name is Sidney Molson. Yeah. Seven years old. Tall for his age. Fair haired. And uh, wears a dental brace. Yeah. Did no one realize the danger these children were in? Police have been posted at Inver House. Oh, not inside the house or ground, sir. The trustees refuse to have the children alarmed. Chief Constable, I want every available man from the mainland. Inspector, you will organize local volunteers for a search. You will need at least one helicopter, right, sir. You will allocate and brief the advanced sections. Would you also brief the party when it arrives from the mainland? Inspector, you will set up your control post outside the main entrance to Inver House. Stay there and maintain continuous radio contact. I want every inch of this island searched before nightfall. Thank you, Tango 4. Carry on. Did you get that, Colonel? Yes, Grant. Is Mr. Cameron with you? He's gone into Inver House, trying to talk them into having a couple of men inside the house. I'll give the contact me in 30 minutes, will you? I'll be at the key side. I'll do that, sir. <laughs> it's 
told yourselves as well. Chief Constable, we must put the well-being of the children first. Yes, two of my men inside the house. It would be very disturbing. Police would immediately mean that something is wrong. But the constables would be in plain clothes. They would be strangers. We know the children and what is best for them. It's sheer blind stubbornness. No, Chief Constable. It's love. And you refuse? What is it, young lady? You're a policeman, aren't you? Am I now? Yes, I know you are. Those are your men waiting for you. Well, what if they are? What's your interest? What's yours? Eh? What's your interest in us? We're perfectly safe here. We're not going to be attacked. Now, who said anything about being attacked? Mary, dear. Run along now. There's Dr. Rose Wancho. Oh, please wait. No, no, you run along. Mary. Now, if you could report to me on that. Yeah. Everything arranged, sir? They refuse to have us grant, not even one man. Uh, Sheer idiocy. Uh, the message from Colonel Bingham, sir. You're to meet him in 30 minutes at the quayside. Of course. The boat with the reinforcements. By God, we can do with them. The locals have done wonderfully well so far. To the quayside. Tell Bingham I'll be there. What were you saying to that man, dear? The policeman. What makes you think he's a policeman? He told me he was. Did he tell you what he was doing here, Mary? No. Shall I tell you? Would you like to know? Yes, please. Sit down. You know that big farm on the other side of the island? Well, the farmer there has had some of his sheep killed. He's asked the police to help find the culprit. Some local dog, they think. So the policeman came to interview Shelley. Do you think Shelley did it? <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, why do they want three policemen to interview a dog? <laughs> I uh, know. Uh, I'm with you, Matt. Ah, uh, good. <laughs> Here we go. You mind that bank there? Uh. Uh. Hey. Hello there. It's the Cameron, sir. So you from the road. You're doing a grand job, lads. We appreciate you saying so, sir. We'll find them, never fear. Thanks now. They'll never find it, you know that. Aye, maybe, uh, maybe. There's still a boy, though. Uh, Jamie, you know what, kids. I'll be away home for supper. Did we go out yes. here? Way! Come on, folks. That's, that's it. Come on. Hey! Oh, hey. His death was instantaneous. Aye. I'll take this to the laboratory freezer right away before postmortem changes are too advanced. Thanks. I'll be over there later on. Mark, I must talk with you. Again, Miss Foster? It was sabotage, wasn't it? 
A press statement will be issued by the chief constable in due course. That will only tell me what I already know. Five more trustees died today. Eight down, four to go. Is Mary Valley well protected? Colonel Bingham has made adequate security arrangements. But he can't protect her from the nightmares in her mind. How do you know about that? A tape recording made by Dr. Haynes. I, I borrowed it. Do you intend to exploit her too? No, but we can use Peter's notes. I see. A posthumous bestseller. Please believe me. The tape recording, it's really terrifying. At least listen to it. Even if I listen, what good will it do? Thanks very much. I'll go back to the hotel and get the tape right away. My dear fiends, please subscribe and hit like on my YouTube channel. Spread the word and let's scare the uh, world with monsters on Monster Movie Night. <laughs> and as always, keep screaming. That's it. Pack up. About time. It's away home. <laughs> Yeah, that first one's going to taste grand. Why? I can't wait. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Hey, Colonel. Oh. I tell you, we'll go down to the inn tonight. Hey. Aye. <laughs> We'll spin a couple of yarns to those newspaper men. <laughs> about, about, about the ghost of Black Dugan. <laughs> Get up, you clumsy clod. <laughs> Ashley here. The boy has been found dead. There is no ordinary murder. He's been stabbed 32 times. The wounds form a definite pattern all over the body. Sidney was such a nice little boy. Friendly, cheerful. Why did this it's have to right, happen to Mrs. him? It's Why it's all this right. The nature of the killing points to one thing. Ritual murder. <laughs> Goodbye, Sir Mark. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye, Mark. I'll see you later. Yes. Can I show you the grounds, Colonel? Thank you very much. Colonel, I refuse to alarm the children. Their happiness is our prime consideration. For God's sake, one of your children has already been murdered. Unless my men are allowed inside the grounds, I cannot guarantee maximum security. Your men are patrolling the boundary walls on those two sides. Out there is the sea. Come, I'll show you. Nobody's going to try this route. The children are quite safe. Have they no idea what has happened? None. As you can see, it's a special treat tonight. Mary's bonfire party. How long will the children be out of doors? Oh, they're going indoors for a hot drink in a moment. We'll light the fire in half an hour. 
They'll be safely tucked in bed by 10 o'clock. But will they be fully supervised? Oh, four adults to just over a dozen children? That's far from satisfactory, Doctor. Just half a dozen policemen carefully placed... No! The final responsibility rests with us. We accept that. Our founder, Helen Van Traylen, always put the children first. Never deny the young, Colonel. It'll be the biggest bonfire we've ever seen. Uh, and that old guy will burn and burn! Fire. The fire. My body's burning. Vincent, where are you? Vincent, help me! Oh, poor Vincent. Mary, what happened to Vincent? He died. I loved him. But it was my fault he died. What happened, Mary? Why did Vincent die? It was my idea. They had to destroy the accounts. Kerosene. It was burned like a torch. But the wind changed. The stairs broke out. We were trapped. My love, you tried to keep them back while they got into the payroll truck. But they trampled you, threw you with their horns into the fire. Vincent, I'm burning too! My feet, my boots, my poor palms. Well, what did that tape tell you? A nightmare? It was more than a nightmare. Something actually happened to that child. Not to her personally. What do you mean? Look at these. It's Helen Van Traylen. Look at the long gloves. She always wore them to hide the scars from the fire. Her husband's name was Vincent. He was an American millionaire. Everything the child says connects. All the American words she uses, like, like knocking pen and, and scattergun and uh, steers and kerosene. But the child couldn't have been there. Exactly. Now, you're a man of science. You tell me how a child can relive something that happened to a dead woman 30 years ago? It's impossible. Not if the child has psychic powers controlled by her mother. A psychic link between mother and daughter. Oh, I don't know. I've never done a story on the occult before. It's all hocus-pocus, mumbo-jumbo. I've always believed in hard facts. Till now. Somewhere. On the dark side of the mind. There must be an explanation. Could Anna Har be using her power to destroy the trustees through the child? She may never be found. Hey, there are bugs on this island that could swallow the tea bread. Hey, will you have another one? Uh, no, thank you. I'm, I'm fine. Relax, Ben. We can do nothing until the morning. You can hardly expect me to relax until that woman is found. The children and the trustees are still in danger. Inverhouse is well secured. It's the obvious choice for the next attempt, isn't it? She will have to get past our patrols. Well, what if she already has? Everybody at Inverhouse will be around that bonfire. They'll be sitting targets. Inspector Grant and his men can be there in an instant. By which time somebody else could well be dead. I'm sorry, Captain. You must excuse me. Hello, Control. Control 3-5. Over. Control to 3-5. Report. All is clear. When are you expecting some action? The children come out in ten minutes.
Well, what was it you wanted, Sir Mark? I want to examine the cerebral tissues from the bodies collected this morning. What, no? It's urgent. Well, you'll want the slides now, then. Please. What possible use is there in looking at scraps of dead bodies? Miss Foster, I am a pathologist. But it has nothing to do with what I've told you about. Didn't you listen to anything I've said? Your theory raises certain questions. I hope this will give me the answers. Oh. Thank you. Identification, please, sir. Thank you, sir. Anything happened, Sergeant? Nothing, sir. Except the children, that is. What about them? You can hear them from here. They've started a party. Thank you, Sergeant. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about what? The trustees in that boat were dead before the explosion. What? Why should their bodies be destroyed? To hide the manner in which they were originally killed? Oh, that's impossible. There must be some mistake. Miss Foster, even Dr. Rose would never question Sir Mark's deductions. Dr. Rose? What's it got to do with her? I'm sorry. After her retirement, she remarried. You knew her as Dr. Laura Tyrrell. She's now the medical officer at Inver House. Laura Tyrrell, of course. I must admit, I always wondered why she should bury herself in such an out-of-the-way place as Bala. And Dr. Yates as well. Why? What's so special about them? Well, Dr. Tyrrell is a first-class biochemist. She's specializing in the chemical relationship between the brain and the personality. And Yates? He's a brain surgeon. And like Dr. Tyrrell, the best in his particular field. We'll just go in there. Right, you could go around to the front now. Um, Give us a gift. Right, we'll, we'll just go in there. Ah, good evening, Colonel. Good evening. They seem to be enjoying themselves. What with all this laughing and fireworks, it'll be a long time before we get any peace tonight, sir. Fireworks. Explosives. <laughs> Short pitch. When will 
I'm sorry, Sir Mark, it makes no sense to me. Just so much scientific hocus-pocus. But surely you must see the implications. Man, I'm a policeman. I'm used to dealing with facts. Very well. The trustees are elderly and immensely rich. They have an intense horror of dying. Show me the man who hasn't. They have used their power and their wealth to try and achieve immortality. <laughs> You're pulling my leg. That's impossible. How? By transplanting the nucleus of their adult knowledge, experience and personality into the minds of those children. Miss Foster, play the tape, please. Fire. The body is burning. Vincent, where are you? Vincent, help me! Burned your own mother alive? Yes. She came here to plead with us, prove her innocence. She knew too much. I wanted my revenge. Revenge? But, Mary, you cannot take the law into your own hands, no matter what she's done. She didn't do anything. I did. But she killed Haynes and the trustees. Trustees aren't dead. I was their salvation. Untie me, Mary. Be quiet, Colonel. I'm the mistress here. That good God, man, they can't be a lie. A part of them is. The very essence of their personalities. But how? Memory. A total lifetime's experience has been transferred to those children. So what was on that tape? Did not happen to Mary Valley. I know. The real Mary Valley no longer exists. You are Helen Van Trailer. He knows, he knows, he's pretty clever. Do not condemn Helen, Colonel. She had a vision, the gift of life bridged from one generation to another in physical resurrection. Be one of us, Colonel, for we will be immortal. Like her, diseased and corrupt. Mary's only a child. She will grow into a good human being. She killed her own mother. What was done was done for our salvation. <laughs> she is evil. Helen had the soul of a saint. Her ways are revealed through this chosen child. We believe her purpose is right. Right? Using the bodies of these children to extend your frustrated, aging lives. They suffered no pain. Those children, what do they know? They are dead. But Helen Van Traylen lives on in that child, twisted and insane. She will live to be greater than Helen, perfect in mind and body. She will never be young again. She is using you. Can't you see that? They will lock those children away. They will study them like guinea pigs. <laughs> Nobody will find us. You nearly spoiled our party, Colonel. You came uninvited and you refused the gift we offered you. Now you can play a game with us. Tug of war. Paul, Laurie, Michael, pull him down! Go on, pull him down! You're slipping, Colonel. You're going to die like the coach driver. He played with his light and refused to obey me, so he died too. So did Dr. Haynes. He wants to give me back to that horrible woman. So I stabbed him with her hat pin. Wasn't that clever? But why? It was necessary. He was beginning to find out the truth, just like you. Into the pull fire! in, Paul! Pull him into the fire! Pull him! Pull him into the fire! It's no use. He can't escape like little Sidney Molson tried to. You killed him. You thought Anna did it, didn't you? But little Sidney had to be taught a lesson. Like my mother when she came here to destroy me. She didn't know we can all be born again. She didn't know I can live forever. 
You could have been one of us, you silly man. Now you'll burn! You're gonna burn! <laughs> Well, my dear Boris, <laughs> speaking of children and playthings and such things, <laughs> you rascal, you, let's take this off a little while, eh? <laughs> He's just getting ready and reared up for Halloween that's coming up in the next month or so, hmm? <laughs> well, my dear fiends, how about that film, hmm? <laughs> you, did, you, did you guess it before it was over with, that, you know, those children were actually uh, reincarnations possessed or what have you by the adults? <laughs> oh, my evilness. They did have a time there, didn't they? But of course, Christopher Lee, he knew what to do right off, right off the bat, as they say. The bat, Dracula, he played Dracula the bat. Oh, well, okay. Poor joke. I'm not good at jokes, you know that. But anyway, I'm very good at horror and very good at monster movies, eh, Boris? <laughs> well, my dear fiends, aha, it's that time again. Time for my coffin, time for his perch and time for your bed. So let's get to it. And until next time, as always, <laughs> keep screaming. Mm -hmm.